Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to this virtual presentation. Thank you, Station Library, for having me. Um, so today I'm going to be playing what I call blues jazz. If you look up in the dictionary or the Wikipedia, I don't think you're going to find a genre called blues jazz because there are actually just lots of different types of blues and there's lots of different types of jazz. Um, theoretically, blues is the foundation of jazz. It tends to be a more simple form of music and jazz tends to, um, can use more complex harmonies and chord progressions and such. Um, so what I'm going to do is just play tunes and comment on how they relate to blues and jazz. Um, by the way, both um, genres, blues and jazz, do use improvisation. That's a necessary part of it. Okay, so I'm going to start with a tune that I'm pretty sure you all know. Uh, it's what I would consider a blues uh, song, a blues format but um, I'll jazz it up a little for you. Sexy sex, get your kicks on. 
up the Route 66. a big hit for Nat King Cole, and he's usually more considered in the jazz category, uh, but the basis of the song is uh, just pretty much what we call 12-bar blues, which is one of the most common forms of the blues. Not all blues use that form um, or even use, all, oh, the, use three chords, but a, a lot of blues songs um, are uh, like that. For example, I'm just going to quickly uh, give you an example of another tune in the same key, um, which is what I, I would consider straight ahead blues. Um, just very, very quickly. <laughs> actually using at least two bass lines, uh, right, or a, a more traditionally swinging bass, which jazz, um, swing jazz loves to use, is something like this. Right, now in the um, Sweet Home Chicago, which is a Robert Johnson tune, um, I use what we call the classic shuffle. And if you notice, um, in that song, and I don't want to get too heavy in theory here, in theory, but um, in that song I only used, I believe, three chords. Um, the one, the four, and the five, not necessarily in that order. But um, in the, when I played the Route 66, I was, um, oh, and, and, I, and when I played the Sweet Home Chicago, um, I was pretty much playing just what we call major chords seventh chords. The blues really, um, the seventh chords they like to use are the uh, dominant seventh, I believe that's what we call that, as opposed to the major seventh, right? Sounds a lot jazzier, right? Um, but the blues folks like like these, uh, these kind of sounds. And it, by the way, this is all about sound. Um, now when you uh, find a style of music, that you like, it's usually about the sound, uh, right? Artists uh, try to have their own unique sound and, and there are different sounds that come along with different types of blues and different types of jazz. Um, so the sound that I like is combining the blues and the jazz and staying more on the blues side. Um, now as far as, um, you know, there's blues licks and, and little doodahs that I do like. So um, you, I might insert something like that into a more traditional jazz tune. That's you know, so I can jazz up a blues tune, or I can blues up a jazz tune. All right. Anywho, so now also in the Route 66, I use more chords than just the traditional three chords. Um, and I and I was using some fancy. Um, so here's a chord like a thirteenth. You know, these are called. It's an example of what we call in jazz an extended chord, uh, where the blues, straight ahead blues, doesn't use that kind of stuff. But I really love the sound of these certain chords, like the thirteenths. Um, and then I might descend them. 
So that's a jazzier type of sound um, that we did not hear when I played the Sweet Home Chicago, right? Um, so, you know, once again, when, when you're an artist and you're playing a song, you want to decide what kind of sound you want. Um, sometimes when I play the old traditional blues tunes, I like to honor those sounds and um, and not try try not to add these other chords that I like. Um, sometimes it's actually very difficult as an artist to um, take away some theory that you know, so you can create a certain sound for a certain song. Um, all right, let's see. Just so I don't talk too much. <laughs> Let's get on to the next one. Okay, actually, all right. So sometimes you can take, um, all right, so Route 66 was an example. It's a really, a, the structure of the tune is a blues tune, but I jazzed it up, right? So it's still a blues tune though, but it's jazzed up. Uh, I played you the Sweet Home Chicago, which was straight ahead blues. Um, sometimes if you can take a blues song and um, put it in a band setting, and then it becomes swing, right? It's, it's suddenly like a, um, a jazzier version. So I'm just gonna do this quick um, other blues tune. Um, and, and don't worry, we are gonna keep getting jazzier and jazzier as we go along. <laughs> but uh, you might know this tune because this was an example of a tune that, um, uh, let me just double check my notes so I'm not going to say anything wrong here. But um, Big Joe Turner sang with Count Basie. So usually when you think of Count Basie, it's a, it's a jazz band, right? A jazz orchestra. Although they were marketed as the band that played the blues. Um, not certainly all the time, but they really had a bluesy sound. And um, Count Basie uh, often used Big Joe Turner. Um, uh, to sing with his band. So here's one song that um, on the piano, uh, just me and the piano, it sounds more like what we would just call boogie woogie. <laughs> Say 
jazz band and you got the uh, wonderful swing dancers going on. Then we call it a nice swing tune, right? It's swinging anyway. Um, okay, anyway. So uh, now I'm going to do a tune. You know, I talked about improvisation and well, by the way, what, what is improvisation? Um, it's pretty much um, utilizing theory where you can, you just kind of make up the, the, the notes as you go along. So, um, and different People have different levels and abilities of, of this. Um, but usually, um, you know, uh, when you're improvising, for example, uh, what the solo that I just did, uh, I didn't know what I was going to play until I played it. Uh, maybe a millisecond beforehand, I, I thought in my head, maybe I want to hit a certain note, or, or maybe I just want to go up, uh, up the piano. But um, you don't have the notes in your head um, before you play them. Um, well, in general. Uh, so, uh, as blues and, and jazz artists, uh, we also have this thing called creative license, right? And we can, um, you know, you can take a song and um, create your own arrangement of it. So, one of the tunes, uh, one of the first blues tunes I really uh, loved playing and, and learning was. Um, it's, a, it's called How Long, How Long Blues, and it is credited to Leroy Carr. He certain, certainly um, uh, recorded it. Um, but the actual recording, now, you know, we talked about um, uh, the 12-bar the blues, or, you know, the Route 66 is an example of what we call 145, or it's 12 bars. Uh, 12 measures, you know, the, the whole song is made up of 12 bars, or 12, another way of saying it is 12 measures, and it just keeps going around and around and around, right? Um, there's a, a, other forms of blues, and so the how long blues is what we call eight bar blues. There's only eight bars in the song, and once again, I don't want to get too deep into theory, but um, I'm hoping that you can hear how this song is going to be different. Um, all the songs are always going to be different as far as, you know, different keys and different bass lines. Um, but this one, you know, the structure of it is different. Now, what I've done, though, is I like a, um, a jazz this one up, too. So um, the, I'm just going to quickly play you. Um, and and uh, the uh, Count Basie band used to do this one, too. Uh, so this is somewhat modeled after their arrangement. Um, but the original arrangement is something like a something like that, right? Uh, it wasn't really a lot of chords, right? Um, but I like to add these other chords, and so I'm going to perform the song now for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Now 
you know the sun? Lower and goes up. In the east. And it sets way down in the west. I sit here wondering which one is loving you the best. Don't you live alone? Well, I sit here wondering where, where has my lover been gone? How long? I wait, but how long? To um, this next song is uh, was actually a Duke Ellington uh, and also written by Lee Gaines tune called "Squeeze Me." Just squeeze me. Um, and the reason I picked this song is because um, it it's got a lot of chords very similar to the blues, um, but I guess blues people wouldn't say, "Hey, that's a blues song." So anyway. So we're going to start branching further and further away from the blues. <laughs>
for you. I'm in the mood to let you know I never knew I loved you so. Please say you love me too. When I get this feeling, I'm in ecstasy. Just squeeze me. Papa, don't you tease me. All right, so that was, um, you know, there are chords that are very close to the blues in that song, but they use um, certain uh, chord progressions that are fundamental in jazz. Um, you know, jazz has this amazing theory of how you can get from one chord to the next, and it's it's um, built on this uh, innate relationship between the notes and, I guess, sound waves and everything. It's really amazing. Um, but anyway, so I hope you could hear it. It was bluesy. And by the way, I, I think I started saying before, there are things um, that I do that are common in my blues songs, like uh, something like that, like these little trills or, um, or um, what we call blue notes which, uh, I don't, once again, I don't want to get too deep into theory, but um, there are you know, the major scale, and then blues, uh, we, we, we have at least one major blues scale, which in the C scale would sound like this. All right, there are three notes that uh, are in the blues scale there that were not found in the natural occurring major scale those notes and so a lot of times when you play those notes you can get the blues sound or you can uh, slur the notes like you know is this a sound that um you know you might hear uh with the guitar the old guitar uh, the guitar players where they can bend notes and they can get the note that's actually in between the two notes you know that that's a uh, those are sounds that eastern music uh, uses, but in Western music we, we tend to just use the notes here uh, unless, we're, unless we're slurring them like that, right? Alright, uh, anyway, so I'm going to um, I, I want to play another example of a blues tune uh, that it, it has a, a different form. Um, now, I was I was a little reluctant 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 Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't talk now, but hopefully I, I, I'm playing uh, for your pleasure, You're, you enjoy that. But um, I was um, thinking about not including this song uh, because it's definitely on the somewhat darker side of the blues. And by the way, um, another reason why I wanted to do this is because some people just think that the blues music is some depressing form of music. Actually, it's evolved into... Um, it can be happy, uh, jump blues, or all different, like I say, different styles of blues. Um, like Willie Dixon, who said he was, Willie Dixon was a uh, prolific songwriter and a blues bass player, and when he was interviewed about, you know, what is the blues, he said it's the facts of life. So really just um, blues songs tell stories about really every aspect of life. Uh, it might be, you know, love, it, it might be betrayal, it might be floods. Um, it might be feeling good, it might be uh, asserting yourself, or at least in the use of fantasy, <laughs> maybe this song is about that. Um, this is, and one of the reasons I'm going to play it, because it, it was um, performed, it was a big hit for Bessie Smith, and Bessie Smith is often hailed as the greatest blues singer, so uh, I, I wouldn't feel right not including her in this presentation today. Um, the song, though, uh, even though it, it sounds like it could have been written by her, because she was a wild woman, um, it was actually written by, or it's credited to George Brooks. So uh, this is called Send Me to the Electric Chair. Send Me to the Electric Chair. And this is, um, obviously, if you listen to the lyrics, it's about, uh, I guess, own, owning up to some responsibility. So th this is more the adult section if we have kids, maybe you don't want to listen right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, David Bromberg also um, 
uh, covered this, as well as Dinah Washington. I'm a big fan of hers. And uh, even though I think she's more in the jazz category, she, she actually did um, a whole album, went back when we had albums, albums uh, singing the songs of Bessie Smith and honoring her. All right, anyway, here we go. You see, I, I just cut my good man's throat. Well, I caught him with a traveling jane. I warned him once before. I had my knife. I went insane. And the rest, you ought to know. To the devil down below I killed my man I gotta reap what I sow Judge, judge The kind judge Send it to the electric chair Structures are very well, a little similar to the next tune I'm going to do, um, which is um, this has become like a jazz standard. It's called I Got Rhythm, and of course, it's a Gershwin tune, 
Uh, this one definitely has the AABA. Uh, I might have to think more about the electric chair, but I want to just keep going right now. Um, and uh, this one became so popular for the form of the, the chord progressions and the form of the tune that uh, musicians actually just refer to it as rhythm changes. Like if you're going to play, there's a lot of songs that are built upon this type of chord progression. You know, it could be in any key, but um, uh, it's, you know, we can refer to it as rhythm changes. So when, if you're on the bandstand, you know, you could say to somebody, uh, oh, we're gonna do rhythm changes in, in uh, the key of C, right? Uh, and they'll know what you're talking about. Uh, usually they're jazz people, they, they don't even want to know. But they'll, they'll just, because they have amazing ears and they will listen. Um, anyway, so I'm just gonna quickly play this for you. And then um, what I want to do is play an example of a song that uh, utilizes these changes. Some of the blues um, licks, you know. 
inside those songs, but then I'm also playing some of the uh, the jazz chords, you know, these extended chords and stuff. So um, anyway, uh, you know, you put these songs with a big band, and then uh, it's going to sound a lot jazzier with horns and bass, a horn section, uh, Louis Jordan. You know, if you're not familiar with him, uh, you should definitely check him out. He's He's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Anyway, um, so I'm going to do this song uh, that he did that utilizes the rhythm changes. But what I'm going to do is insert another tune that uses the same uh, changes in the first part of I Got Rhythm, like you know, that, that kind of part, not, not the... I'm going to insert a song that uses the rhythm changes just in the beginning part of the rhythm changes um, and it has a different middle. So hopefully you can hear how that's different. And then I'll go back to my original song. I usually actually do it the other way around, but today I'm going to reverse it for you. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Um... <laughs> Um, uh, 
started, you know, when I first heard, heard that song, I was like, wow, I really love that song. But what's Floy Floy and what's Floy Doy? So I'm going to leave that as a surprise, okay? Because I want to keep this, you know, get get back to family programming. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, so not uh, far from these kind of sounds um, is another tune that, oh, well, anyway, so yeah, I inserted Flatfoot Fluji in there. And uh, hopefully you notice that flat foot, uh, foot <laughs> flat foot fluji. Yeah, you try saying that ten times fast. Um, that uh, that had a different uh, middle part. Like these songs are what we call A A B A, and the B was different. It was right. right that, that that was different from the. Um, song that Louis Jordan used to do. Um, it was actually written by uh, Mike Jackson and Andy Razef. And um, I just love this tune. And it's, uh, let's see, once again, or this is another example of it. It's got the uh, rhythm changes, you know, what we talked about before. Uh, 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 uh. So anyway, um, this song has that same kind of that part, but the B part, the other part, is going to be different. So a lot of songs are built on, and, and once again, this is like, I call this like crossover jazz stuff. Um, you know, when you get into the jazz fusion and the avant-garde and Afro-Cuban, um, I'm not really sure what they're doing. You know, um, this is just the sound that I like. I, I like this crossover sound when uh, you have traditional blues and then um, you know the blues divas where that were using some of these types of forms, and then uh, you know maybe into the 50s. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, certainly like Louis Armstrong. By the way, the, the a lot of the blues divas from the 1920s were using uh, like Fletcher Henderson band and and Louis Armstrong in their music. So they did have that jazzy sound, so it was like kind of jazzed up blues, um, which once again is the sound that I love. So anyway, um, how about you knock me a kiss? Can we do that virtually? <laughs> If you insist, I'll cut out the cake just for your sake. Baby, come on and knock me a kiss. I like mine, I hope to die. You just get a load of this. Yeah, when you get high, dog, gone goodbye. Baby, come on and knock me a kiss. When you press your lips to mine, was that I understood It tastes like a candy, brandy and wine Peaches, bananas and everything fine I love jam and no flim flam You can scratch that off my lips This ain't no jam, the flam can't scram Baby, come on and knock me a kiss i 
scratch that off my lips. This ain't no jam. The flame can scram. Baby, come on and knock me a kiss. Let's see. What I'm going to do now is uh, a tune that I know you know. And what's really funny, see, another way that tunes, you say, well, what, what's a jazz tune? Well, uh, it, it could be a tune basically that was written by a jazz musician as a jazz piece. Or you can also just take um, a any song, well, you know, uh, an older pop tune. Uh, before it's labeled as jazz, uh, and apply jazz theory to it. Once again, that means you know you, you apply um, certain uh, ways of getting from one chord to another. Um, like I say, the jazz musicians, uh, I consider myself more a blues stylist. The jazz musicians are tend to use much more complex, like even on these songs, they'll use much more complex harmonies and um, what we call substitutions. Uh, I'm keeping it pretty simple, closer to the blues. And once again, this is a sound I really like. I hope you like it too. Anyway, um, so this next tune I'm gonna do, it's really interesting because sometimes um, people think of it as blues and sometimes they think of it as jazz. But it was actually originally written as an aria for an opera. <laughs> and. Uh, the song I'm talking about is Summertime. So um, I'm going to do my version of that. And here we go. Summertime, and the living is easy. reasons I did that was because um, it's sometimes called blues or sometimes jazz really originally an aria um, it's very similar in chord structure to uh, a song that was a big hit for BB King and I'm just gonna do uh, maybe just a 
shortened version of this too. Um, now it's funny though, because you can take, I, I play this in the same key, um, but you can take very similar chords and if you add a different rhythm, um, maybe it's not so obvious uh, that it's very similar. Anyway, I'm gonna just play that and see if you can hear that. songs. Um, let me just try this and uh, uh, we'll just see if I have this. We have any more time after this, but I think this is it. So anyway, hey, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in today and you can always tune back in because I think this is going to be up for a while. Uh, once again, thank you Sachem Library for having me on Gail Storm. And you can hear more about my music, um, where, where I'm playing or where I'm virtually <laughs> performing for, at galestormmusic.com. That's G-A-I-L. So www.galestormmusic.com. And um, I also have a Facebook page, but really my website is what I would recommend uh, listening to. All right, so I'm going to finish off with, uh, let's see, this tune that was actually, um, a, uh, I believe, a hit for, let's see, let's see, um, oh, it's, uh, well, a hit for Frank Sinatra, right, so um, it has, a, I believe, a different structure than the other tunes that we've, I've been doing today, me, myself, and I, right, we. And it's uh, written by Johnny Burke and Arthur Johnston. So um, I guess I want to finish this song because um, 
you know, hopefully we can find the silver lining in the, these strange times that we have. And um, I hope that y'all are well and um, you stay well. And look forward to seeing y'all live, right? Live sometime soon. from heaven You're gonna find your fortune falling all over town I'll be sure that your umbrella is upside down Trade them for a package of sunshine and flowers So when you hear me thunder, don't run under a tree. There'll be pennies for heaven for you and me. Thank you, and hope to see you soon.